This is the face of a man watching college football on an eight. Chill in the air today in Bloomington on a 43 degree day. Iowa and Indiana, a couple of wins away from bowl eligibility. That's a big deal for the Hoosiers who have only been to four bowls since 1991. As we welcome you to Memorial Stadium, I'm Beth Mullins along with Anthony Becht and Rocky Boyman. And Anthony, also a big day for the uh, Iowa Hawkeyes. Want to keep this train rolling. They are still very much in the race for a Big Ten West title. They're a couple plays away from beating Wisconsin. They feel real good about this football team, both offense and defense. And they're much in play for this West side of the Big Ten. But Indiana now, Tom Allen's got these guys flying around an explosive offense and a young feisty defense poised to make this a very good Big Ten matchup. All right, we are set for the Hawkeyes and the Hoosiers. Iowa won the toss and deferred, so Indiana will receive. Miguel Racinos will handle the kickoff. Mike Majette back deep. And he'll fair catch it down inside the five. They'll get it out at the 25. So our first look at the Indiana Hoosiers and Peyton Ramsey, the sophomore quarterback out of Elder High School in Cincinnati at 6'2", 210. Big showing in the loss to Ohio State career highs in pass yards and touchdowns. I really like this kid. Gunslinger can get the ball all around the field. Very dangerous when it comes to running. Internal clock. Iowa's defense, one of the best in sacks in the Big Ten. He'll have to make sure he gets rid of the ball in time. He's got the true freshman alongside him and the handoff to Stevie Scott out of CBA High School in Syracuse, New York. They, of course, are still without Morgan Ellison. He is still sitting out the suspension. They lost Cole Guest, another guy in the season opener with an ACL injury. So they've had to go deep in the backfield alongside Ramsey. It's an experienced offensive line that Coach Tom Allen says is the foundation of this team. And the first throw is to Nick Westbrook for a first down. Rocky? Well, no question the strength of this Iowa defense is their front four. They're very experienced, very upper class laden, and very, very hard to block. But if Indiana can find a way to neutralize this defensive line, two new linebackers in the Iowa uh, uh, linebacking core there and two freshman cornerbacks. Some plays we made. The quick throw to the tight end, Peyton Hendershot, and he's just shy of another first down, a gain of nine. Uh, the linebackers Rocky was referring to, both Nick Neiman and their leading tackler, Jack Hockaday, remain out of the lineup. That's been a challenge all season. They had to replace that entire core this year. Ramsey steps up. And the incompletion, not only is it a, uh, a big and experienced offensive line, Anthony, it's a tall one, too. They got guys going 6'8", 6'7", 6'5". Yeah, you know, Nelson, 96, he's six foot eight, folks. And you better get your ball up at 6'2". The quarterback doesn't have that swinging throw. It's a little bit three quarters, so that'll be something he'll deal with up front. He had three sacks as well last week against Minnesota, so it's third and short. They'll try and run it. Ball is out. Looks like Indiana was able to jump on it, and the spot is right at the line to gain. And well, Indiana did the right thing. Get it to their big back, 21. He's six foot two, 236, but there's an exchange issue. Peyton Ramsey not sure whether he wants to give it or pull it. In that situation, you got to just give it to the back and understand what's going on. Very fortunate they're able to fall on that football. And they get the first down as well. That was Geno Stone who got into the backfield. He gets a start at safety today. We'll see more of Amani Hooker at linebacker. And this is Ronnie Walker getting to the edge. And another first down for this Hoosier attack led by offensive coordinator Mike DeBoard with tons of experience. When they've run it well this year, Anthony, they've won. Yeah, they've been very happy with the freshman in the backfield. Pleasant surprises. You talked about the injuries, but him and Scott have both been very productive in the run game. 
three games rushing over 200 yards already this year and they have a good balanced attack right now that's nick westbrook the 6-3 junior out of lake mary florida they have a definite size advantage on the perimeter size experience and also going against two freshman corners for iowa who i thought were tested against minnesota last week they had some interceptions but early in the game they had problems against the receivers walker again couple of yards off the right side rocky one thing i noticed in that play right there with i was secondary their corners being freshmen yeah they got to cover guys but why not go after them with the run you see indiana go to that nub corner let's see if number 20 the freshman wants to tackle today brents out of indy and riley moss out of ankeny iowa matt hankins and oj moody are available on the two deep and it's number two with the catch, Reese Taylor, the converted corner, who was a quarterback in high school. You'll see him in the backfield as a running back. He'll play the slot. He's got very good hands. Heck, we even spawned, thrown some balls in practice this week. So, again, look for him to be a factor early on. And now down into the red zone for Indiana. That is Reese Taylor now lining up at running back. The pitch to him. It's a couple of blocks on the edge down to the 14 yard line. An impressive open for this Indiana offense, really putting some pressure early on the Hawkeye defense. Yeah, well, this is a very base 4 3 defense, very fundamentally sound. This de defense is about getting in the right spots, about short tackling. They don't make mistakes. And again, giving up as few points as yeah. possible. They've been very good at that this season. Been very hard to touch them up early in games and indiana's trying to do that right now underneath juggled and caught and it's another first down luke chimian returning to the lineup from injury first and first down let's see where they're going to spot it yeah, no are they saying he juggled it and incomplete yeah that, yes. that may yes. have hit the ground there beth as we see the replay here he kind of double catches it it's been out a few weeks, injured uh, one of their weapons in the slot position, so third down. Third and five on this 12th play of the drive. Westbrook and Jason Sean Harris to the near side. And a Previous play of an incomplete pass is under further review. They will uh, take time for the review, and we will take the time out. Is it a catch or not? That's close. You can get a lot of college football on ESPN+. Plus. You can get college football and college football and college football. You can watch college football. College football? Yeah. College football? It's ESPN+. Plus. It's a standalone streaming service. You just watch it in the living room. The ruling on the field will stand an incompletion. Yeah, we weren't able to find a clear view of the ball controlled. Potentially could have hit the ground there behind the foot, but you can't see it cleanly. So just not enough information for them to overturn. So instead of first and goal, it's third and five from the 14. Walker is the offset back. They'll get it. And he's going to come up short. Taken down around the 12-yard line by uh, Jake Gervas, and it's fourth down. Yeah, Gervas and Hooker, both safeties, will get into the box. You'll even see Hooker play linebacker, but that's a great job coming up, making that tackle. Third and five. I don't know if I love the call running the football. you got six, three, six, four wide receivers, very good slot guys. I would have put it in the quarterback's hands and allowed him to make a pass. Logan Justice is your place kicker, seven for nine on the season. And well within his range here, this will be a 29-yard attempt. Out of the hold of Drew Conrad. Dan Godsell is the long snapper. Kick is up, and the kick is good. Long sustained drive for Indiana and the early lead on Iowa. You can get a lot of college football on ESPN Plus. You can get college football and college football and college football. You can watch college football. College football? 
Yeah. College football? It's ESPN Plus. It's a standalone streaming service. You just watch it in the living room. ESPN College Football is presented by the unexpected energy of ExxonMobil. Energy lives here. And in part by Buick, proud partner of the NCAA. Oh, homecoming weekend at Indiana. Little pick six. Kids got skills on the return. You're watching the Big Ten on ESPN. A 13-play drive comes up a little short, and they settle for the field goal, but it is the 12th scoring drive this season of over 10 plays for Indiana as the tailgates continue post-kickoff on a uh, what's turned into a nice sunny afternoon. Still on the chilly side in Bloomington. Temperatures in the low 40s. As the Iowa Hawkeyes get set for their first possession of the day. Jared Smolar is uh, handling the kickoff duties for Indiana. And it looks like Devontae Young is back deep with Amir Smith-Marset. Guys, they're trying to get the a TV camera cord, not our camera, but a TV camera cord uh, off the field. That's the issue here. Uh, I was say, he's throwing our guys under the, the bus. Oh, no, 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 what not? <laughs> uh, now that's taken care of. direction of Smith Marset and they'll get a running start at it takes a hit at the 27 yard line so here comes Nate Stanley the junior out of Menominee Wisconsin 6-4 is a big guy at 242 and last week against Minnesota in the win four touchdown tosses Anthony uh, this kid is huge he's strong in the pocket he wants to stay there and deliver the football he's an offensive coordinator at the line of scrimmage he'll change plays run directions to me I want to see an improvement in accuracy Beth getting the ball in his hands to the receivers being more effective to make this team more balanced run and pass a lot of folks think he's got an NFL future but uh, the uncertainty is would it be at the end of this season or uh, one more year at Iowa still remains to be seen. They'll run it with Torin Young, who's the sophomore. Once again today, they are without Ivory Kelly Martin in the backfield. So we'll see a lot of Young and probably Makai Sargent today. Part of this team is really its tight end unit. And Noah Fant, who was limited in practice this week, may also be limited in the game today. Uh, he is not out there to start right now, but he was warming up with the team pregame. Looking to the outside and going up to make the catch in Indiana territory. And hauling it down was Brandon Smith. Well, they said that the way they could be more productive on offense is Brandon Smith getting involved. Him and Smith Marset, number six, are their key receivers. These guys have one-on-one -on -one routes, man-to-man, -man, for the majority of this day. And if they make catches like that, Beth, it could be dangerous for Iowa's offense. The other thing it does, Anthony, everyone knows Iowa likes to run the ball. If they can pat complete passes like that, it'll loosen that box up. That was good for 23 yards. They'll throw again. T.J. Hawkinson, he's one of those outstanding tight ends. But there's a flag coming in from the secondary. Noah Fant was also in the game right there. And I think they're going to get Fant for running over a defender in his route as they deployed two tight ends on the left-hand side. Him and Hawkinson, number 38, he has risen to be a very effective weapon for Iowa's offense as well. So two very good tight ends, but Fant is the NFL product right now. Offense, number 87, 15-yard penalty, first down. That is indeed Fant right there at the bottom of your screen. And in, in an era of all up-tempo offenses around the country, today, folks, this is Kirk <laughs> Ferentz, two decades old school. It's been effective, and they're sticking with it. Well, you know, it's that, that's kind of the mold of their players. Two tight end sets, movements, motions. They'll have a fullback in there the majority of time, and they're going to run powers and, and outside zone plays, and they're going to will you, test your will up front. That's what this program's been about for the 20 years that Kirk Ferentz has been here. And he's showing a little early emotion. Thought his guys were getting held. Time for the quarterback, and Stanley delivers again to Smith. They'll get some of that yardage back out to midfield and a gain of seven. 
talked about Stanley being a pocket passer. I'll tell you now, he's big. Think of a Ben Roethlisberger. I mean, he's 245. He may be 250 out there right now, Ben. Hard to bring down, but he's not much of a runner. He wants to stay there, deliver the football, and be that formidable pocket passer. A two-year starter now appearing in his 26th game at Iowa. 19 of those as the starter. Makai Sargent now in a tailback, but Stanley going to keep it in the air and overthrows his target, looking for Smith Marset. And there is a flag down on the play. Iowa wanted some holding on the receiver. You see Marset Smith right there being held. Looks like ball number 42. Prior to the pass being thrown, holding defense number 42. 10 yard penalty, automatic first down. That's, that's ball. He plays the Husky position, kind of that hybrid. Uh, he is a sophomore, six foot, two hundred and twenty pounds. But he is. A, that's a tough matchup for him against a very fast, quick, young slot receiver for Iowa. Wide receivers were terrific last week for Iowa in the Minnesota win. Fourteen catches, nearly two hundred yards, and a couple of touchdowns for Smith, Smith, Marset, and Nick Easley. And now the ground game. Good cutback, and down inside the 30-yard line goes Makai Sargent, and that's a first down and a gain of 11. Look at this tight end, Hawkinson. He's known for catch. Watch this block, folks. If you're a tight end and you want to learn how to play football, get your hands inside, and you bench press a player. That's a pancake block right there. He's got me fired up early in the game. I love it. Wow, what a block. Big block there. Wow. Ball start. Offense, number 74. Five-yard penalty. First down. Let's check into the studio now on Chris Cotter. Under eight minutes to go here in the first. Uh, the first possession for the Iowa Hawkeyes, down 3 nothing. Nate Stanley going up top again, and it's intercepted by Jonathan Crawford, and a flag is down at the pickoff point. Crawford returning it to the 45-yard line, good for 30 yards in the other direction. That's a nice play by Carter, but I think beforehand this is going to be pass interference by number 17 Lane here. Doesn't get his head around, gets a little handsy on Marce uh, Smith Marset. And again, Iowa testing him down the field, taking some shots versus this man coverage early on. Pass interference, defense, number 17, 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. And that will take away the takeaway, which Indiana has been terrific at this season under Tom Allen, the head coach who also handles the defense. 13 takeaways leads the Big Ten, but they're going to lose one right there due to the penalty. They stress it every day in practice, Beth. It's They start their practice with a circuit, and it shows. Now you hear the boos, but Lane definitely was out of position. Didn't get his hands around, grabbing the receiver very clear there. And that's too early pass interferences right now by this uh, Indiana defense. And they just tagged on an unsportsmanlike penalty against Indiana. So that will push the ball all the way down inside the 10-yard line. Beth, it was an Indiana assistant coach who ran out on the field, losing his mind. He saw the referee throw his hat because he didn't have the flag with him. That's what accounted for the penalty. Wow. Tom Allen can't be happy about that one. So instead of possession, they have back-to-back -back penalties, and now they're backed up inside the 10. And they'll go power eye here with the fullback. Stanley to throw to the end zone. Hold in touchdown, TJ Hawkinson. make sure he caught it but if he did outstanding job tracking the ball at the highest point getting this to his body his knees down hard to tell if the ball's not secure there but I don't see any movement there's the ball he's got it against his chest his knee his thigh is down 
And if that, that catch happened five feet from me, he secured that football. That's a touchdown. Second of the season for TJ. And just when you think I was going to come out and run it right down your gullet, they come out throwing. And two costly penalties for Indiana deep in their own territory. The majority of the explosive plays come from the tight end position. Timeout. Indiana. They're first of the half. They may want to have the referees look the Indiana at... Indiana head coach is challenging the ruling on the field of a touchdown. Again, I'll tell you what, May Stanley's been hot. Go to your tight ends, get it to the guys. That's the security blanket, and they got a couple of them. Hawkinson doing a great job, and Stanley is fired up. You can get a lot of college football on ESPN+. Plus. You can get college football and college football and college football. You can watch college football. College football? Yeah, college football. It's ESPN Plus. It's a standalone streaming service. You just watch it in the living room. Well, the touchdown has been confirmed, and they did so quickly. So the lost challenge there for Indiana. Five plays, 74 yards in just over three minutes. Impressive for Nate Stanley, who was three for three on that drive, and he hooks up with Hawkinson for the touchdown. Racinos has the extra point and a 7-3 lead. Well, that was a great series here. And they came out passing, took some chances on the outside. Brandon Smith with a big time catch. An unbelievable block by Hawkinson right there. Pancake getting the run game started. And then, hey, why not go back to him? Give the dog a bone, right? When he makes a nice block, you throw him the football. He and Fant, they've been one of the more better tight end combinations in college football. Stanley having a nice start. Three for three bet on that drive. And the TD, a nine-yard uh, touchdown toss. The second of the season for Hawkinson. And for Nate Stanley, his fifth touchdown throw of the year. Bet that block has still got me excited. I'm just saying. <laughs> that, that should be a sports center top ten. I'm just saying. I don't He's know. Calling for the top Rocky, 10. you just don't, Rocky, you don't see that anymore. I'm telling you, that that's a you put that in your highlight tape. When you get a, when he graduates, the NFL teams are gonna jump on that one. Say that you know the next level folks love seeing that kind of block. Fair catch here by Majetso out to the 25. We've got a pair of terrific games. Featuring ranked opponents, college football coming up, Pac-12 variety at 3.30 Eastern. It's Washington and Oregon. And then our Saturday night football showdown, Wisconsin. And Jonathan Taylor visit the big house and that vaunted Michigan defense. Coming up tonight on ABC, there's your consecutive games with 100 yards rushing Jonathan Taylor, six in a row, best in the country. And Karan Higdon is right there behind him. Both teams scoring on their initial drives today. Iowa with the 7-3 lead. They are looking up at Wisconsin in the west. Of course, the Badgers have that head-to-head, -head, so Iowa's going to need some help and certainly hoping Michigan will give them some tonight. It'll be a physical game. I'm looking forward to it. You know, Wisconsin, obviously, with that loss early in the season against BYU at home, definitely was a stunner for me. Looks like they're starting to gain some momentum. Of course, the running back, that's where it starts, Beth, up front, and they got some very good linemen. Here's how things are shaping up. Of course, Ohio State and Michigan undefeated in the East, and Wisconsin at 2-0 in the West, but they still have roadies with Michigan tonight. And later on in the season at Penn State, Iowa also has to go to Penn State. Third and six here for the Hoosiers and Peyton Ramsey. They bunch trips to the right. Ramsey, pressure coming, and they'll get him. A.J. Epinesa, the sophomore. Well, they don't have their starter, Kronk, at 54, so now they have left tackle, gets beat, number 71, Baker. He's getting a start today, and he gets worked a little bit by number 94. It's a nice job there by Epinesa, 
He's a very young pass rusher on the outside that they really like. Isn't it's unfortunate too because Iowa did not sort through that stack alignment. They had Jay Sean Harris run wide open down the middle of the field. Ball start. Kicking team number 29. Five yard penalty. Fourth down. That is Indiana's fourth penalty in under 10 minutes to open this game. Very young football team, Beth. Tom Allen talked about the worries sometimes with communications, issues with being on the same page, and of course you can't hurt yourself with these penalties, especially early in the football game. Kyle Gronoweg on the return, and he'll get it out to the 45, and there is a penalty flag. 49 yards on the punt, eight on the return. During the return, illegal block in the back. Return team number 17. 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down and 10, Iowa. How about some Big Ten news and notes uh, for the Nebraska Cornhuskers? Wow. Off to the 0 and 5 start. They do have the early lead against Northwestern this afternoon, trying to end. They've lost nine in a row. Dwayne Haskins has Ohio State up early. He's uh, been outstanding all year long. And Jonathan Taylor leading the nation with nearly 170 rushing yards per game. They've got the primetime showdown on the road at Michigan tonight on ABC. Uh, Scott Frost, one of my former teammates, a friend of mine. I think they're going to get off the schneid. I mean, I can't I'm fathom they haven't won a game yet, but I think this Northwestern game going on the road, they're close. Maybe they get one today. Nate Stanley with Torin Young in the backfield. Torin will get the call. What do you guys think? Is it a two-man race right now, Tua, Tonga Vailoa, and Dwayne Haskins, the heavy favorites in the Heisman race? Yeah, I think those two players are there. I'm going to throw Will Greer. I mean, I don't want to be biased, but he's been one of the best quarterbacks as well, and they're still undefeated. I think there's something to be said about these offenses, and those three quarterbacks right now have been spectacular. Yeah, I'm, I'm going with Tua, but I'm, I'm interested to see what happens when he's challenged. they got some tougher games coming up down the line. He gets hit a little bit more, gets challenged. That'll put him even higher in the race. And you see Mackenzie Milton. If they continue to run the table he'll find a spot in new york as well he'll be in prime time next week at east carolina makai Sargent gets to the outside and it looks like he's uh, got the extra step there for the first down yardage zone runs ab you gotta be able to stop it you see these big white jerseys zoning off to the side right now indiana's front four not doing a good job uh, you know hawkinson again setting the edge at the tight end position he's having himself quite a day indiana defensive ends have to get themselves and set the edge because if they don't i was going to continue to run the ball effectively terrific o-line led by keegan render the center on the remington watch list has been playing in every game for the last three and a half years, they'll run it right up the middle behind him. And a good block from Brady Ross to spring young for six yards. It's just impressive watching this Iowa offense. We saw an outside zone, then we saw an inside zone right there, a gap schema, just a downhill dive play. They really keep the defense guessing of what they're going to attack you with. Well, they got an offensive coordinator that knows a thing or two about O-line play in Brian Ferentz. One of the three Ferentz boys that played for the Hawkeyes for their dad. Able to run it to the outside again, down inside the 40-yard line at a gain of 16. Hey, let's check out the fullbacks block on number 43. I'll tell you why. When you look at Brady Ross and Percy, he looks like he's 35 years old, a grown man. But that's how you take on a backer and clear the way for your run, young running back, sophomore young, making a nice run out in front. Right now, Iowa taking control at the line of scrimmage. Fullback, Anthony. What's a fullback? <laughs> exactly. The <Stone laughs> Don't make them guys anymore. You just saw Brian Ferentz on the sideline there, now in his second season. Not only under the guidance of his dad, but also a stint in New England with the Patriots and Bill Belichick and that staff helping him get ready to one day probably be an awfully good head coach. Learned from a lot of great coaches as well, Beth, and left the program, went to the Patriots, 
you know, uh, learn from Dante Scarnecchia. He's like, hey, and that's the first time any, any analyst has ever mentioned his name. I said, man, he's one of the best offensive line coaches in the league in New England. And I'll tell you, if, if anybody's watched New England's offensive line over the years, they really don't have the big first-round draft picks. They create and develop, and he's at, about attention to detail. Those are the things he's learned and brought here at Iowa. And he's going to count on that O-line probably right here on a third and two to keep the drive alive. Jackson and Reynolds and Render and Ferguson and Worfs. Will they get the push? They'll go I formation again. They're and second in, to the Indiana half. With the timeout, time out. that's already their second of the half. What you got for us, Chris Cotter? Thank you very much, Chris. So the Gophers jumping on top, and uh, Fandy with the early lead. A couple of ranked teams in some trouble. Rocky, what you seeing from yeah, your ben, vantage point? Yeah, one of the issues with what Indiana does defensively, they rotate in and out a lot of guys. Upwards of 30 guys have played on defense, but you see the problems. There was some miscommunication. One linebacker didn't know he was supposed to be in the game. One defensive lineman was trying to come out. It's tough rotating, especially with a very tough scheme with so many things that Iowa does. Third and two. Stanley. Looking to go over the top. Incomplete, broken up at the goal line by Ashawn Riggins, and it's fourth down. Now, being they took a shot there, I would assume they had a plan on going for it on fourth down. So they tie to go down the field to Smith Marset. Good job by the DB there. A little contact, but he got his head around, Beth. That was the difference there, and it looks like they are going to go for it on fourth down. Fourth and two from the Indiana 30. Two tight ends in the game. I think they're going to run this either to the right or the left, depending on where the numbers are light. And now Kirk Ferentz will call a timeout. Timeout. Iowa. Their first of the half. 30-second timeout. So the Iowa Hawkeyes are still very much in the race in the Big Ten West. Going to go for it on a fourth down here. They've been averaging about nine yards per play in this first quarter. Difference in the game is the trenches. The offensive line for Iowa is controlling the line of scrimmage. Indiana, like Rocky said, rotating a lot of players, trying to find answers to really sustain and hold up. They're more gap players. They're not really getting that push that they need. And Iowa's taking control, which has been a reason why your coach is confident on fourth down and two to go for it. Two tight ends, so keep the fullback out there, Brady Ross. See if that's the same shape here as they break the huddle. It is with Makai Sargent deep in the eye. Man coverage on the receiver, Smith Marset to the bottom. They'll run it left, and the cutback is good for a first down. Again, check with me at the line of scrimmage, and they're going to pick left side, right side, and really just run their stretch zone play. And look, all the offensive linemen getting pushed. There are no red jerseys that hit the tailback to about three yards into that run. So, again, a lot of confidence up front by Iowa. These Indiana linebackers, Anthony, need a lot more downhill to their game. I feel like they're kind of waiting back and waiting for the play to come to them. You want to stop a zone run tour, you got to take the fight to the offense. And, and Rocky, that's kind of interesting because Tom Allen said that's what his backs, corners, and safeties are going to do. Linebackers is shoot the gaps, get down the field, and we haven't seen that early on. So, you're right. They may be second-guessing and just not playing with the instincts you want to see early on. Well, that's one of the issues with rotating so many guys in and out of the game. You don't get to see the look time after time again. They measured, and it is a first down. A drive that started back on their own 30-yard line for Iowa. The ninth play of this drive coming up.
trust me, when the running game with Iowa is strong, they're going to continue to pound the rock and make you feel the effects of it. Uh, right now, good balance and keeping Indiana on their heels. Stanley, one time. Down the seam, busted up by Juwan Burgess. He was looking for Nick Easley, who had a shot at that. Second down. Yeah, Nick Easley, clearly one of the more accountable, reliable receivers for Iowa there. Makes an outstanding adjustment with his head here, but good job by Burgess just getting his arm through there and swatting it away. Very good technique. Again, getting his head around so he doesn't get called for a penalty and making a big play. That's the reason why they've been so effective in getting takeaways this season. Yeah. Such a much more competitive defense under Tom Allen the last couple of years. They've made great strides to be more competitive in the Big Ten. Well, they're going to throw again out of the gun, Stanley. Incomplete, overthrowing Fant, so they get away from the run here on first and second down. You're probably wondering why, if you're an Iowa fan, you haven't seen much of Noah Fant today. He's still recovering from a little bit of the protocol from last week's injury, but third downs are going to be key downs from him. Here he comes in. This is the second snap we've seen him. His second penalty. He leaves a little early here. Yep. He's a guy that's getting antsy. you got to get him the ball early on the football game, just a little early off the line. A lot of people say, Beth, he's one of the best tight ends in the country. I really like his game. He's big, he's strong, athletic. He's just not healthy right now, and you're only going to see him in a limited action today. Indiana's going to refuse that penalty, so it's third and 10 from the 28. And we got Fant right here again. When he's in the game on third down, you better find out where he is because he is a weapon. Blitz coming up the middle, picked up by Sargent. That gives Stanley time to find Fant in the end zone. Touchdown, Iowa, as he beat the linebacker. And 28 yards later, he's in. May only be his third snap in the game, Beth. But I'm telling you now, if he's in the game, you better find him. This is just straight one-on-one. -on -one. Watch him beat him. This is why the scouts in the next level really like his ability. Watch how he tracks the ball, pulls it in, shows he makes the catch. This is a tough assignment by Ball covering him one-on-one. -on -one. But this is good by Stanley, just getting the ball up. He's thrown the ball very well today. Excellent block by the running back. Sargent in protection. And Fant, when your number's called, in a limited basis today, he has become productive all year long. Two touches, two TDs, and Anthony Beck is in heaven. They both go to tight ends. I mean, holy smokes, get a camera on these guys all day. We don't have to show anybody else. Look at that catch, concentration. Two guys making spectacular catches. One high points it in Hawkinson, and their fans showing the speed and the athleticism to run by a strong safety. I mean, look, Todd McShay has him number one. I think he's still young. I think he still needs to grow. He could be one of the best in the country. Uh, but again, two weapons, him and Hawkinson. And look at the hug right there. A lot of mutual respect for these two players, and they are dangerous when they're on the field. Beth, Beth, is there an oxygen tank in the booth? <laughs> Our man might hyperventilate today if there's so much tight end action. Uh, <laughs> Give me a jersey. Let's he's, go. Ready go. <laughs> he's ready to go. 62 yards rushing, 67 yards pass for Iowa two possessions two scores that one 11 plays going 70 yards in just over four minutes Miguel Racino to kick it away to Majette again and that one will bound into the end zone Hey, if you haven't uh, checked out the ESPN app yet you got to get it because now it's got ESPN plus more ESPN for you to enjoy, so download it now, including all of the 30 for 30s. And this is the 30th anniversary of the three words that lit a bitter rivalry on fire, Notre Dame, Miami, Catholics versus convicts. One of the 30 for 30 episodes available. You can get them all available on ESPN+. Plus. You know anything about that, Rocky? Oh, I remember being eight years old watching that game and the, all the action going on the up, leading up to that week and the t-shirts and who made them and who allowed that to happen. It was great. <laughs> the fight right before in the tunnel right before the game. God, those are the days. We will, uh, 
We will have your playoff picks, you guys, coming up a little bit later this afternoon. Something uh, for folks to stick around and, and check out. Where are the Fighting Irish this week after that big road win against Virginia Tech? Georgia's got a big one tonight against LSU. And, of course, Michigan and Wisconsin still with a chance at a Big Ten championship and a spot in the playoff. Parker Hesse was the guy bringing pressure on the quarterback. That's a nice job by Hesse. When you rush the quarterback, you want to make sure with a guy like Peyton Ramsey who can run, you keep that containment. Don't get yourself caught underneath. Hesse does a nice job just staying outside, and as soon as Ramsey rolled out, he's in position. Very veteran, experienced player. I think he's got 44, 45 starts coming into this game, Beth. Unbelievable. Talked about how good this defensive line has been for Iowa. On third and ten. Underneath route, caught at the 30, but that's going to be short. Jay Sean Harris, Amani Hooker with the coverage, and it's fourth down. Let's check in with Chris. Minnesota is driving again. Our producer is getting all excited down there. A former alum. No, Minnesota grad. What do we have? Three three unbeatens went down last weekend. We're, we have 11 remaining, uh, but the Buckeyes in a battle. I thought he'd give me some love in my ear, but he didn't say anything, so. <laughs> the last time I mentioned him. <laughs> Just kidding, Ben. 46 <laughs> yards on that punt. And it's back to Iowa. That's why he wasn't talking to you. He was getting this graphic ready so for us that. to he's show that, that Minnesota is trailing, but they're in it right now. Alabama and Georgia playing tonight. Clemson is idle. And then the uh, rest of the lineup, including number seven, Washington, on the road at number 17, Oregon. That's uh, for a lot of you coming up next, either on ABC or ESPN2. Yeah, Oregon should probably be undefeated. I'm not quite sure yet still how they lost to Stanford yeah. with that big lead, but they're arguably one of the better teams, and that's a very big matchup for the Big 12 overall. So uh, whoever wins that game might be the leader of the pack. Uh, yeah, that's a playoff game in, in, uh, in most people's minds. Two terrific quarterbacks there. There was just a sideline warning issued to the Indiana sideline. They have already picked up an unsportsmanlike penalty on that sideline earlier today. As Torn Young will probably take us to the end of the first quarter. Two times with the football, two touchdown passes from Nate Stanley to his tight ends, Hawkinson and Fant. And that's got our former tight end, Anthony Bechtel, in a tizzy upstairs. On this homecoming weekend, the Hoosiers trying to prove they belong. The Hawkeyes trying to keep it rolling along. You can get a lot of college football on ESPN+. Plus. You can get college football and college football and college football. You can watch college football. College football? Yeah. College football? It's ESPN+. Plus. It's a standalone streaming service. You just watch it in the living room. Welcome back to ESPN College Football, presented by Exxon Mobil, and they take the tradition on the road, the wave. I hope they're watching back at the top floor of the Children's Hospital. In Iowa City, they... Uh, Waving to the kids during home games and on the road as well today here in Bloomington with a 14 to 3 lead and looking to get right back at it and they'll ram it right at Indiana. Torrin Young up the middle for a first down. Yeah, Tom Allen has to find a way to penetrate or make something happen at the line of scrimmage. Right now, Iowa continues to control the front for Indiana, and they've been pretty good up front, Beth. They've really caused some problems on film. They've, they've done a nice job, but this Iowa offensive line right now is getting it done up front. Play action, Stanley all afternoon to throw it. 
and his intended receiver was taken down. That was Nick Easley, and there's a flag, Rocky. Yeah, one thing, Anthony, that, that Indiana could do is just start some sliding, some slanting with their defensive line that can't solve those gaps. The problem is Iowa does a lot of zone running, so which doesn't allow the thrown. shift to have Holding any effect. Defense, number 14, 10-yard penalty, automatic first down. You're right, there is an advantage for that, and if they do run that zone, they could make big plays in the backfield, but if they hit the wrong gap, exactly. it could gash them completely, so it's got to be strategic. Uh, even implement a few uh, linebacker run blitzes, maybe just pick a spot, try to engage in an area, but right now Indiana has to find an answer against Iowa's offense. 50 yards and penalties for Indiana. Two tight ends again in the game for Iowa. Stanley finds easily first down and into Indiana territory. That, that really, what you guys are talking about, one of the beautiful things about Kirk Ferentz, right, who is now the winningest coach in Iowa history. Everybody in the world knows what they're going to do, yeah. but they do it so well, the challenge is to try and figure out how to stop it. And then you get the balance, right? You start passing the ball. Uh, again, just uh, they always have the right players in positions. They get the quarterbacks. I mean, listen, nobody was really talking about C.J. Beathard. Well, you know what? He's starting for yeah. the 49ers. So, again, these are the type of quarterbacks at the next level they're looking for. Right now, Stanley doing an excellent job running the show. 16 yards there. I'll throw it again. Able to dump it off for short yardage. He took us all the way back. For those football fans who remember watching the NFL back in the 1970s when you know, the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Dallas Cowboys and the Miami Dolphins were, were running the roost. Remember, he said, you know, there's different ways to win. I, I like the style that we play here. It's like, you know, the Pittsburgh Steelers were free weight guys back then. The, the Cowboys and the, and the Dolphins were Nautilus guys. You know, you can do it different ways if you want. He's taking us back to the 1970s weight rooms. Still works, Ben. For the I mean, analogy, right? Regardless of how you do it, this still works. Some would say this is old school. This may be new school because yep. these young teams that run these spread offenses and these hybrid defenses don't see a lot of it. Intercepted. Picked off by the coach's kid, Thomas Allen. And he'll return it inside the 35-yard line. 30 yards on the return. It's a nice job by the coach's son. How about this? He starts over the center and he's trying to bait him that he's going to come, but he drops out and he reads eyes on Stanley. Stanley thinks he's coming, doesn't worry and think about him, and there he is right in the zone. I'll tell you what now. He doesn't just play his kid because he's a coach's son. He plays a kid because he knows how to play the game. He's been a very good linebacker, and that's a big play. Indiana needed that one. You may notice, if you're an Indiana fan, he usually wears number 44, but he switched to the number 10 today. In deference to George Talaferro, the legendary former Hoosier who passed away recently, they're wearing the 44 instead on all of their helmets for their three-time All-American who starred on their undefeated team back in 1945 and lived a full life to the age of 91 we'll have more on george coming up but right now indiana's in business with stevie scott in the backfield ramsey looking for six into the end zone they're wrestling for a touchdown ty freifogel Receivers best, 6'4, 6'3, Rifogel 6'2, but I'll tell you what, that is some concentration. Secures the football even with the cornerback Moss's arm in between him and the ball, not able to rake it out for Iowa. That's a strong catch by that young man. One of the best in the country at takeaways. They get one with the interception for Allen and they cash it in quickly. And it's now a 14 to 10 game. Allen tells his dad, I got 
gets you, and he steps out in front, gets an interception to start the turnaround for Indiana, and then Ramsey going deep to one of his deep receivers and gets a big catch for a touchdown. Tonight, it's a battle of the unbeatens for the WBO welterweight world title. Crawford, Benavidez Jr., tonight at 10.30 on ESPN. No room for error. Two down, base is one. Nice catch, my man. That's going to be on sports then. As father and son hug it out. The 14-10 uh, to 10 Iowa lead, two long scoring drives capped off by the tight ends, and then the younger Allen with the pick, their Big Ten leading 14th takeaway of the year, and Peyton Ramsey able to hook up with Ty Freifogel for the score to tighten things up. Beth, eight interceptions, eight different players for Indiana. I think that just shows about, you talked, Brock, you talked about the rotating of players. A lot of guys getting in there, taking advantage of their opportunities as well. This one will bounce, and now the return. And looking to make amends for what could have been a huge mistake is Smith Marset with the long return and the hurdle at the 40-yard line for extra yardage. Jumped right over the kicker, Smaller. I wanted to get a camera on the head coach, Ferentz, on this because he probably was ready to throw his headset when he saw that, but he made up for it. Watch this, making some guys miss. Indiana got to be better tacklers at the spot and the speed of Smith Marset to get up the sidelines. Oh, and watch this. Ooh, nice jump. Oh, that's a, that turns into a disaster, into a awesome play. Look at that athleticism by the sophomore. 60 yards on the return, and uh, are they going to... Let's see, where did they spot this? At the 38-yard line, first and 10. Now we'll pound it out on the ground. Let's check in with Chris Cotter. <laughs> well, Chris, we got our guy out in the truck. He's rowing the boat right now for Coach Fleck. That's our producer, Ben Hogg, in the house. The Minnesota grad. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty cool, though. Hey, you know, this is, yeah. they've improved. They played Iowa really tough uh, last week. Young team on offense, but right now, Indiana, big play on defense last series. They're going to have to come up big here and at least hold Iowa to potential field goal opportunity after that big return. Looking right out of the backfield, Sargent with the first down. The spin for Moore, down to the 13-yard line. Jalen Williams whiffed on him, 20 yards. Yeah, you know, Sargent does a nice job. He's been a really good back, complete back, making the moves on Willis in space. If you want to be a back in college and really get those snaps you want, you got to be able to make guys miss right there. Sargent taking care of it in the open field with a big play. Young and Sargent have combined for nearly 80 yards on the ground so far in the first half. Under pressure. Stanley in trouble, gets out of the grasp of Ball to keep the play alive. Throw into the end zone, touchdown! Nick Easley! Nate Stanley ran about 50 yards to throw a 12-yard touchdown pass. Did it not look like a guy I mentioned earlier? Ben Roethlisberger, this was, look at this, wide open ball is there to make the play, but he just falls off, you see the golden black, just a little flashback, but look at his play, gets tipped up, 
I don't know if he was even going easily on that play. Gets tipped, but easily makes a great catch. The most reliable receiver on this team. Great concentration by this young man. Three different receivers have caught a touchdown today from Nate Stanley, his 38th career TD pass, which moves him up to seventh all time at Iowa. And a 21 10 lead. Just when you think Indiana's coming back, Iowa comes right back. Big play on the kickoff return. And then a big throw by Stanley. Excellent catch by Easley. Iowa back on the board. There's music, there's fashion, and sports. Those are the things that reflect culture and change attitudes. This week, the love affair continues. I have decided to skip college and take my time to the NBA. You take passion to the highest level, and you're going to get an outpouring of emotion. My first love really was baseball. Then I said, geez, you know, basketball might be pretty cool. This week on Monday Night Football, a classic NFC matchup. Lock in from the start. All three phases going to dominate today. As the 49ers take on Aaron Rodgers and the Packers in Lambeau under the lights. Are you kidding me? Wow. Two teams searching for a win to turn their seasons around meet on Monday Night Football. Niners Packers, Monday at 8.15 on ESPN. ESPN College Football, brought to you by Advil. You'll ask, what pay with Advil? Uh, a lot of fun at the homecoming parade. A little wet, but that didn't dampen spirits out on their wagons. And even a little, oh, a little freewheeling out there, Ooh. up on two wheels. Speaking of freewheeling, how about Nick Easley? with that terrific catch. Nate Stanley has three touchdown throws already in this first half and a 21-10 lead. Three different guys, Hawkinson, Fant, and Easley on the receiving end. And it's time now for Beck's breakdown, Anthony. Well, it's interesting, you know, even though this play kind of broke down offensively, I want you to watch what happens. Stanley's gonna get the ball and he's gonna feel that pressure Let's pause it right here. Watch easily, okay? He's kind of into his route, but he's still, he sees a moving quarterback, and he makes a move. Allen gets lost at the linebacker position, and he's wide open. And a good job by Stanley keeping his eyes down the field and making that play. Ball was not happy after that, after he could have had a huge play for Indiana on defense. Yeah, Marcelino should have had the sack, and this was his reaction coming over to the sideline after the play. When you come off the outside edge free, and Rocky can attest to this, you've got to be able to make that play. Ball's been one of the best in tackles for a loss right there. Not able to bring the big quarterback down. Second and one. Ramsey will dump it off to Stevie Scott. He bowls his way forward for the first down, Rocky. No, Anthony, you mentioned it. Rarely does a defender come free. You know, the defensive coordinator's drawing up stuff all week, trying to get that guy to come free. And when he does, you've got to make the quarterback pay. You've got to make that play. It's so frustrating. That's a great moment right there, because you're trying to bring a young player, get his emotions back. They're going to need him. See the coach on the sidelines talking the ball, give him a high five, say, listen, man, come back. We need you in this game. Well, Ramsey runs with it for a couple. It'll be second down and eight. Play action. Another dump off. Same play to Scott. And he'll get out about a yard shy. Let's see where they spot him. Third and short coming up. Christian Welch with the stop. Amani Jones, by the way, one of their other middle linebackers, out for the first half due to a targeting penalty next week. So not out there right now with the Hawkeyes. They will have him available in the second half. Indiana, if they don't get this, they may try to be aggressive on fourth down as well. 
timeout. Iowa, their second of the half. Full media timeout. Anything can happen on Saturday night. I'm going to lunch. You want some lunch? Bell is celebrating student sections and passionate fans like these by awarding the best student section of the year. The Indiana Hoosier student section already on the national watch list. Go to ESPN.com slash Taco Bell to see how your school can compete. Third and one with Stevie Scott alongside Peyton Ramsey. And a 21-10 Iowa lead on the road. It's homecoming at Indiana. Ramsey will keep, and Ramsey will get nowhere near it. Parker Hesse corralled him quickly, and it's fourth down. Great job of Hesse playing the two-way go of the quarterback. Watch Hesse just work it right here. Good balance, pushes it down, stays in position, nowhere for Ramsey to go. And then the Calvary comes in and helps out Welsh at the linebacker position. It's hard to beat two defenders, Beth, let alone two on the outsides. That's tough for Indiana. A four-yard loss will force the punt from Hayden Whitehead. Gronaweg chased back to his own 10-yard line. Well, we got a couple of good ones coming up for you later today at 3.30. It's Washington at Oregon, number seven against number 17. And then tonight in primetime, 7.30 on ABC, it's 15th ranked Wisconsin at number 12, Michigan. And get ready for the run game with the Badgers. Well, we all talk about the running back, but what about the offensive lineman? We got the center, Tyler Biadish. We got Bo Benshaw, the right guard. David Edwards, the right tackle, all these guys. Look at these holes that they're making on the on the offensive line. And I'll tell you, I don't know. I, I might be able to run through some of those holes that they're opening up in Wisconsin. <laughs> don't kid yourself. Of course you couldn't, Anthony. And let's check in with Rocky. Now, as you guys are discussing Wisconsin, Michigan, Anthony, as good as that Wisconsin line is, there's a lot of money to be made for Jason Winovich and Rashawn Gary out there. They put out a performance today. Their stocks yeah. can go way up. I'm telling you, look out for Michigan. Could be a sneaky one-loss team rolling into the shoe at the end of the year. And we, you know we talk about good losses. Yeah. Who's their loss against? Notre Dame, Fighting right? So it's, yeah. it's unbelievable. Torn Young, the deep back in the eye. They've gotten back to the line of scrimmage. Going to bring up third down. That was interesting on that play. They brought the safety, Khalil Bryant, down. That linebacker depth looks like they're trying to find a way to solidify that inside run. Yeah, bring a couple more bodies in. Very dangerous area when third and three, third and two, Iowa can do so many things with their offense. Right here, they're going to have to find, uh, Indiana's going to have to find a way to be productive. They've been better, Beth. The last couple drives, they got to get off the field. We're going to go empty here. Pressure coming. First down and no offense. Out to the 21. We've got another update. Chris Cotter. Just not enough space balls references in Maybe. college athletics, and Cotter brings it. May the Schwartz be with you. <laughs> That's my best one I could bring to the table. Uh, Nate Stanley's 9 for 13 through the air today, and there have been solid on the ground, up to uh, 87 yards rushing. Four possessions, three touchdown passes, and a pick for Stanley. Yeah, good balance today by the Iowa offense. 
And you said they're in spread in that third and short. I mean, those are mismatches when you get their tight ends in spaces versus strong safeties, linebackers. They feel like they can win that battle every time. Big house in primetime tonight, Wisconsin and Michigan. Jonathan Taylor, the leading rusher in America. And nearly 170 yards a game. Stanley again breaking a tackle. But a good swarm by the Indiana D. And they're going to set up a third down again. It's a nice job. Jones, number seven, coming off the edge. See him on the bottom of your screen. Just got to wrap him up. Again, just a big leg, strong quarterback play of Stanley. Nice job in containing him there. Now third and long, about third and seven. This is a more manageable situation for Indiana's defense to go against Iowa. See the balance there, rushes, passes, keeping Indiana on the heels. Nickel formation here for the IU defense. Pressure coming on, Stanley gets the throw away. And good in the open field. That time, Marcelino Ball didn't let him get away as he hauls down easily, and it's fourth down. It's a good job by Everett off the edge. Again, a lot of unblocked defenders here. See 69 Everett. He's there. Look how strong Stanley is. It's hard to bring him down. And this is being on the spot. That's how you come back, Rocky, and make a big play in space like Ball just did. That's right. you got to find a way to put the last play out of your head and redeem yourself. I mean, he was the guy that missed on the quarterback sack, resulting in the touchdown a little bit earlier in the half. Harris will scoop it up and go down at the 31, a 44-yard punt by Colton Rastetter and a 21-10 Iowa lead. Yes. No room for ever. Nice catch, my man. That's going to be on sports center. Sports. Whoa, the goat of ball boys right there. I guess there's a goat for everything now. ESPN, home of the college football playoff. Who's in? Can the Big Ten get a team in this year? Well, their best chance right now, the Buckeyes are in some trouble. Minnesota's on top of them in the second quarter. Northwestern looking to send Nebraska to 0-6. Michigan State, Penn State, and that Wisconsin-Michigan game coming up later. The fight and flex right now, holding that high-powered Ohio State offense to just 10 points. Yeah, interesting. 21 to 10 here. Stevie Scott flags flying as he picks up nine. The other big scorer early on, Vanderbilt is up on Florida, 21 to three. That could spoil the cocktail party next weekend. Holding, defense, number 91. Return your penalty, we added to the end of the run. First out. That coming after the Gators moved up eight spots after that big win against LSU, really back-to-back -back LSU and, and Mississippi State, but in some trouble right now as they get set for uh, the bye, actually, next week, and then Georgia the following week. How do you handle games after huge wins, mm -hmm. Beth? That's something changing the culture. Dan Mullen trying to get that infused with his team and, and not showing good signs of it right now. The stretch and the catch for Reese Taylor, and let's check in with Chris. <laughs> Enough Mel Brooks, and if you're Chris Cotter, it's good to be the king. We're always listening, Chris. Yes, always. 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 All the information you funnel us is important. Final two and a half minutes here in Bloomington. 
three Nate Stanley touchdown passes, two of them to his tight ends today. But it's Indiana trying for the late points before the intermission. Looking at a third and eight here. Ramsey proves to be elusive, and he'll run for the first down to the 35-yard line. Coming up a little gimpy. It's a nice job making somebody miss. We saw Stanley avoiding tackles, or Ramsey doing a nice job as well, picking up a really a big first down, Beth. Indiana desperately needed that to continue moving the ball. On first and ten, they'll run it with Stevie Scott. Remember, they're down to just the one timeout. They've already lost a challenge in the first half. Jake Gervas with the stop, under a minute and a half to go. Ramsey, play action, almost picked. Christian Welch. Thought he could have had that one. Yeah, I thought maybe he could have got a flag as well. Not called. Not called. Let's watch this as he comes to your screen right here. Watch him come in. Looks like he's draped and grabbed. Is that number 20? That's the, the freshman Brents. Yes. And uh, that may have been some contact early on, but they didn't call it. Instead, it's third and four. Blitz off the edge. Caught right around the marker. Let's see if they will give Freifogel the forward progress. They will not. Indiana hates the spot. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. He caught the ball when he got pushed back. Then he kind of continued to run. The referee put it in this spot where he was stopped. It's going to be fourth down. Long throw here for Ramsey. Catches the ball. Right at the 26-ish. Yeah, which would have been good enough for a first down, but Geno Stone kept coming after him. And the spot is behind the line to gain, and they're going to take another look. Yeah, let's see. He goes up. Nice job catching it, bringing it down. It's definitely on top of the point of the 30, which puts it right around, right around the 27-ish, 26-and-a-half yard line. Which, even if they gave him that, the 27 is right on it. But again, here's the situation. If he breaks a tackle right there and ends up getting yards, that's a still continuation yeah. of the play. So they didn't bring him down on that moment. The referee felt like maybe he was still trying to go and make, some, make something happen there. And here's the thing working against Indiana. The ruling on the field is he is short. And if that's the best vantage point, for the officials to look at, they're not going to have the information to overturn it. This is going to be a big play. Again, they, they need a touchdown. Was able to get away from the defender with a second effort. Yeah. Therefore, the line to gain is not made. The ruling on the field stands as called. Down. So now you're looking at a 46-yard field goal. Yeah. The longest that Justice has made this year is 44. And yeah. they're going to keep the offense out there. Yeah, they'll go for it. And just to, that, to add to that point, I think that's exactly what the referees, they felt like, you know, he could have broken that tackle and made some plays. So they're going to count it where it's at. So, again, you're going to have man-to-man -man across the board. Can somebody win in a route here? No safety initially, zero coverage. I'm sure someone will drop back late. They'll roll out Ramsey, looking downfield, incomplete, Iowa will take over on downs. Intended for Harris, busted up by Amani Hooker. And a late flag on the near sideline. Yeah, they want interference. After the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct, head coach of Indiana. Okay, so... 15-yard penalty. First down. We talk about our players keeping their cool, being smart, 
That's the second flag on two different coaches, one now being on Tom Allen, who was begging for uh, a pass interference on Hooker there, who I think timed it up perfectly. Again, zero coverage. Everybody's man to man, okay? Receiver's going to come back to the ball. Uh, it's a pretty good job. Hooker doesn't go over his back. He goes to the side. He wants the referees to call a penalty. He doesn't get it, but he gets a flag for being on the field. To see the pullback guy trying to bring him back. He's like, I got it. Well, you know, not soon enough because he gets a flag. Well, now let's see if Iowa, with a shorter field to work with, they're at their own 43, 41 seconds, and a timeout. And a kicker that is hit from 48 yards already this year. Well, weapons on the field right now in the pass game. Here's Fant. He's in early now. Becomes a factor in this passing game. At the end of the right before the half. Pressure coming. They set up the screen. And it's well covered. James Head with the tackle on Sargent. And a loss of one. Clock rolls. To speed it up here, Stanley, if they need the yardage they want to get. Got to take a lot their time. of time. A lot of time off the clock there. The snap with 15 seconds to go. A first down fans cannot get out of bounds. They'll have to call a timeout. Or immediately spike Or immediately spike, spike, spike here. Yeah. They're going to call. Their third and final timeout of the half. 30 seconds. Yeah, this is a good job. Fant leaning on the defender here. When you straighten up your stem, it gives you an advantage, and you can come out. Very good timing pass by Stanley, understanding where Fant's going to be. But that's that's a big-time route right there. It may look as simple as just an out, but resetting the stem and coming out, that's next-level stuff by Fant. Raquan Jones was able to trip him up to keep him in bound, so no timeouts for Iowa with 10 seconds left. Stanley and Ramsey, their numbers today. The three touchdown throws for Nate Stanley. Well, they've been very, you know, completion percentage-wise on point. Just Stanley right now taking advantage of some of the deeper throws and the touchdown passes early on. Uh, but right now, you see Indiana trying to hold on here as they didn't get it on fourth down earlier. So you're going you're gonna to have to get an out route here or really quick to the ball to snap it. Well, you got to get a first down catch, right? Because if you don't get that, the clock's yes. not going to temporarily stop for yeah. you to spike it as well. If they got down to the 30, they would be in, in range. Stanley, incomplete five seconds to go. So now we'll get a heave-ho down the field. Not able to get that. Indiana coaches right now are telling the defensive backs nothing gets behind you if that ball's up in the air You bat it down bat it forward Their problem right now Rocky is they, they don't have a guy over 6-2 and both tight ends Fanton Hawkinson are 6-5 Where they're putting Nick Westbrook the wide receiver back deep here toward the yep. bottom of your screen and Westbrook goes 6-3 yeah, He's all the way in the end zone Showing a three-man pressure with three guys deep. Stanley will not get a chance to get it off. Jerome Johnson got to the quarterback to end the half. 21-10, Iowa with the lead into the locker room. And right after this short break, Chris Cotter, Jim Mora, Emmanuel Acho will join you from the studio for the halftime report. You don't need a major league swing, a Cy Young arm, or a gold glove. Just the desire, the commitment, the commitment to end bullying. To end bullying. Of any kind, anytime, anywhere. We need more MVPs, more champions like you. To join our team. To join our team against an opponent. We are not allowed to win. We've got this. If we've got you. Join, join our, our team. team. Choose kindness, shred hate. MLB, ESPN, and X Games are teaming up to shred hate. Learn more at shredhate.org. Let's go, defense! Boot shoes, line up, get low! Come on, plan! Focus! Get low! Playing in the NFL is hard, but playing NFL.com fantasy football is easy. And now with live player highlights on game days, it's even easier. 
Make it easier to fantasy football with NFL.com Fantasy Football. Presented by Exxon Mobil. That was one of the bright spots for Indiana in that first half, but they find themselves down at halftime. 21 10, Nate Stanley, three touchdown throws for the Hawkeyes as we get set to start the third quarter. Beth Mullins, Anthony Becht, and Rocky Boyman with us down on the field. Very balanced attack. In fact, 18 rushes, 17 throws in that first half for the Hawkeyes. Yeah, we talk about explosive offenses that are out there in college, but Iowa really does dictate the game when they can do it both in the run and the pass. Look, if you're a number 30 and you're on Iowa, you're doing a pretty good job in the run game. Watch the fullback right here. Ross making it happen up front. The offensive lineman getting involved. And oh, don't forget, look at this block. Maybe the block of the year. Forget about it. Pancake City by Hawkinson. And he's been doing it just as well in the past game as with the explosive players for this team are the tight ends. Hawkinson and Fant making it go. Again, Beth, it's tough to stop. That's what Iowa is known for. Rocky? Important thing, I think for Indiana, the important thing is I would get Peyton Ramsey running around a little bit. Iowa's defense playing a lot of man-to-man. -man. Those defenders' backs are turned. If he can scramble, pick up some yards, it might force him to play some zone and open up some holes out there. Both teams coming in here with four wins. So a win today gets them one win away from bowl eligibility, which would be a big deal for Indiana. After they had a chance last year and lost to Purdue in the season finale, and that kept them out. And into the end zone, and another questionable decision in the return game for Iowa. They got away with it in the first half. Not so this time, but we've got a flag down way back at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, I'm not sure they know the rules here. That ball goes in the end zone, just take a knee. Again. Or even fair catch it. That's a, right there. That's a senior yeah. in Grunwig. But it might not matter, Beth. Indiana's looking like they're going to re-kick it. Offside on the kicking team. Oh. Number 16, five-yard penalty. We will re-kick the football. Brutal. So that's their seventh penalty. Two of them on the coaching staff here this afternoon. That one's brutal because you really just got a great play on special mm -hmm. teams. And now you redo it, and you know, who knows what could happen on this kick. Yeah, where did Iowa end up with the ball? At the 12-yard line, so that's at least going to cost you, even if they fair catch it here, that costs you 13 yards. Indiana's kicker on that last kick, very close to kicking that ball out of bounds, too. Mm -hmm. He still caught it, but again, very dangerous now, get pushed back. So Gronewig is uh, back at his own five-yard line. And after the penalty, the kickoff here will be at the 30. Much better field position as a result for Iowa. They'll get it out across the 35 to the 37-yard line. That's unfortunate. So that's a net of about 25 yards in Iowa's favor. Nate Stanley... 12 of 17 in that first half with the three touchdowns and the one pick. Probably should have been sacked three times as well. Just can't bring them down. Wide open rushes. Nobody blocking some of the defenders for Indiana, but Stanley too big and strong at 6'4", 245. Just a tough guy to tackle. He was the starter last year. 26 touchdown passes. And only Chuck Long threw more in a single season. Chuck had 27 back in 1985. And with his three touchdown throws in that first half, that gets him up to a dozen now on the season. And his first attempt incomplete here in the third quarter, looking for Brandon Smith. Third and long is where Indiana's defense needs Iowa to be. It takes a lot out of their playbook. They want to try not to get them in those close quarters. If they do, they can be advantage. And stopping them on first down, Beth, is important, which they just did. Some confusion there for the Hawkeyes. They're going to run guys on and off. 
the pack of fullback coming in. That's Austin Kelly running on late. He'll run it behind Austin and a good push out across the 45-yard line. That'll move the chains first down. And no damage done by the fullback confusion. Yeah, well, Brady Ross wasn't in the game. Something was going on. Austin Kelly ready to go. Basically, Young got on a backpack and behind him and just let him through the hole. I think Indiana's defensive line has got to do a better job shedding blocks. They're kind of dancing with those offensive linemen a little bit. Shock them, shed them, get off and make a tackle. Nice use of shock and shed from Rocky Boyman. First and ten Hawkeyes. Over the top, lofting it deep and complete, and yet again, a penalty flag on the Indiana secondary. Looking for Hawkinson. Prior to the pass being thrown, holding, defense number nine, 10-yard penalty, automatic first down. Yeah, Jonathan Carr, they like to do a lot of deep crossing routes. You see the tight end there getting pulled back. They've caught plenty of these balls throughout the season with the tight end going across the field and Jonathan Crawford just out of position, cl uh, clasping on Hawkinson and hitting the flag. Thorne Young, the lone setback. 11 carries, 71 yards today for him. Good blocking in front and a run that will get them over the 100-yard threshold for the day as a team as he picks up eight more there. Yeah, you're going to watch. Watch the tackle and the center get out here. And again, when you get two big bodies like this, if you're a running back, this is a dream right here. Look at this. You got all these. And don't forget the tight end blocking out there. That's a good job. That's a Larrick Jackson leading the way. And I'm real impressed of this offensive line for Iowa, big bodies, but they can move. They're getting out and getting into space, blocking downfield, looking good. Two tight ends set here. Play action in trouble, and the quarterback, Stanley, taking a hit as he releases it incomplete. That was Thomas Allen again. It's a nice job by Thomas Allen coming off on a little blitz here, and you'll see him off the, in the back here. Running through the hole. Is there a receiver in the area on that throw? Yeah, yeah. Let's look. It's a good job coming through the middle, getting through the traffic. And was it a forward pass? Definitely just a forward. Yep, there was pass. nobody in the vicinity. I'm wondering if they thought, okay, he got hit as he threw it. That's why it was so short. And anyways, it's third down. Three of five today on third downs make it four of six and a big hitter there to Hawkinson run out of bounds inside the 10 yard line well, they bring they bring Hawkinson in motion and Allen has him but he gets picked off by his own defender slightly and that gives a wide open catch and run up the sidelines being out of the in a, a position where your own guy takes you out 30 yards on that play and then they try and pick up the pace and Makai Sargent wrapped up by Marcelino Ball. Finally some penetration on that zone run by Indiana's defense. That's the only remedy. Got to have guys on the front side shooting those gaps. Guys on the back side playing down the line of scrimmage. Excellent job. And that's a good job by Ball. Got a couple penalties early and out of position. Misses a sack in the first half. Now he's made two big tackles in space uh, for big plays. Second and goal for the Hawkeyes as they get pushed back outside the 10 yard line. Tight ends, Beth. This is a dangerous area for Iowa when they get here with their tight end position. Stanley dumping it off to his back. Maintaining his balance is Torin Young. Touchdown, Iowa. The strength to stay upright, and Nate Stanley has his fourth TD throw of the day. Make sure he's in here. Make sure nothing hits the ground. Look at the balance. It's like an old school Mike Allstop run there, not falling to the ground. Again, just a 
Really a pick by a player being in the motion here on ball. Easily comes down and just his body presence alone takes ball out of the play. And just a simple flat catch. One of the strengths that Iowa is showing, and that was Torn Young keeping it alive and a 28-10 Iowa lead. This season, keep your stories interessante, just like Dos Equis, the only beer used to water every college football field. We need the beer blaster right here. Let's go. Dos Equis, keep it interessante. ESPN. And now you're watching a bet breakdown, Anthony. Well, you know, it's interesting how things work out, but watch Ball here. He's going to get almost picked just by body presence. That's going to allow Torn Young to get open here. Watch. Easley's not going to touch him, but he makes a subtle adjustment underneath because he thinks he's going to get hit. Takes him out of position. Now, 31 from the safety position. Fitzgerald, you got to make this tackle in space. Thinks he trips him up, but that's great balance by Young. And, and there, a simple play turns into a big one for Iowa. Four touchdown passes for Nate Stanley. Let's check in with Chris Cotter. Or will that be the end of the nine-game losing streak for Nebraska? Four to end last year, five to begin this year for new coach Scott Frost. I, I thought maybe this would be the day, mm -hmm. Matt, but uh, eventually it was going to come around. I mean, they just got so many players learning the new system. Parker Hesse got to Peyton Ramsey. It looked like he uh, mishandled the snap. What you got for us, Rocky? Yeah, Anthony, you mentioned the, the crossing action that I was doing. It kind of has Indiana's defense a little bit at, at, at will here. But you got to anticipate that. You got to understand that they're trying to do. They're trying to pick you, trying to get you out of position. You got to anticipate that next move. They're not doing it. Yeah, they got to be better than that. Out of the backfield, Reese Taylor. Uh -huh. Hardy collision with Welch. Gain of eight. You know, in past games, Beth, a lot of success with this passing game with Harris on the inside, Hale, Westbrook, doing crossing routes, kind of confusing the defenses that they played. I think against Iowa, they have some speed advantages with their receivers. They can get them crossing and get in space and hold the Ford up front. Ramsey can get some shots here of some big plays by his receivers. Has the one touchdown pass, a 33-yarder to tie Freifogel in the first half. On the move. And are they going to rule that a completion or out of bounds? Jay Sean Harris, who is out of bounds. And it's going to bring up fourth down. But to that, we got to give credit to Iowa's defense in guarding all that I mean right there another passing opportunity just smothered and once you flush the quarterback out of the pocket Iowa just kind of heats down on those receivers and nothing for Ramsey there to do Marcelino ball running onto the field late kick is a wobbler end over end it's going to be short fair caught at the 39 for the Hawkeyes with the ball in the lead This season, I'm everyone with the case of the dropsies. I just dropped my phone. Can you help me out? Yes! If I could show up on game day, imagine what could happen the rest of the week. ESPN College Football, brought to you by Principal, 
Investments Retirement Insurance. Assembly Hall, home of the five-time national champs with a lot of guys not like Rocky Boyman. Yeah, I don't know if those are <laughs> team-issued shoes. This is good hops hitting the backboard, but this right here, oh, not going to make it. I'll tell you what, we took about three hours to try to get a shot to go in. We couldn't get anything, but those pants, they look good oh, on our man Rocky Boyman. There's the next superstar. Hey, I'm just going to leave it, just gonna leave it up there. <laughs> Romeo Langford, Rocky. Did you get a look at Romeo, the number five rated recruit, the highest that has come into a Big Ten school in about nine years? Wow. Hey, I'm just going to leave it up there, Anthony, right oh, there. That's how it looked. Right yeah. up there, there's a hoop. There's a basketball hoop. Don't get crossed over now, oh. all right? Don't get crossed over. I have to play a game of horse coming up later. <laughs> By the way, du uh, Indiana is featured uh, on November 27th against Duke on ESPN. A part of the Big Ten ACC Challenge. So from the Rocky highlights to the Romeo highlights, this kid can get it done. All-American in everybody's book. Weird little alley-oop action going back door. They are excited. A lot of people think this could be, he could have a Trey Young kind of season. Could be one of the faces of college hoops. Better get a ticket and see him this year because he may be one and done. I don't know. Mm -hmm. And there is Assembly Hall just nice. across the way from us Oops. on a beautiful, crisp fall day here in Bloomington. Second and eight. We'll bring up third and short. Rocky, do you have some history here in Bloomington? Yeah, actually, the last time I was at Assembly Hall was 21 years ago, believe it or not. I came on an unofficial recruiting trip here to Indiana. Cam Cameron was the head coach at Indiana. Got to watch a Bobby Knight coach basketball game. He was losing his mind at one point. He goes in the stands. He's sitting there eating popcorn with a woman next to him. It was fantastic. 18-year-old Rocky Boyman loved it. That swinging chair he threw at you was the ultimate fact that when Notre Dame got you. That's what happened. Third down and a few, and that'll move the chains. Hawkinson continuing a big day for the Iowa tight ends. Their third touchdown, his second, and toss number five for Nate Stanley. Four yards for the score. That's a little sail route by Hawkinson. And honestly, it's just a missed tackle by Burgess. He wraps around. Great balance by Hawkinson. I'll tell you what, this kid's got some speed running away from some of those DBs and linebackers. These guys are weapons, man. Hawkinson, Fant, they can't be stopped. And they have been explosive factors for this offense. A career-long catch for TJ. Now three receptions, 93 yards, a couple of scores. Fant, 43 yards and a touchdown. Stanley is 15 for 22, 231 yards. But you're right, you point out the fact they've been aided by some poor Indiana tackling today. Can't remember the last time, Beth, I've been more excited than seeing tight ends all over the place catching balls for Iowa. Look at the speed up the sidelines. He's got some ups. He's hugging his teammates. Everybody's happy. Even, even mom in the stands gives a little thumbs up to her son. With the Capital One Venture Card, you'll earn unlimited double miles on every purchase every day, not just in airline purchases. Think about all the double miles you could be earning. Holy moly, that's a lot of miles! Shh. What's in your wallet? There are roadside attractions, and then there's our world-famous on-road attraction, the 2019 GLC, Mercedes-Benz, the best or nothing. How about the day for Hawkinson and Fant? Six catches, 136 yards, and three touches. Tight ends today, Beth. That's what it says. The tight ends getting involved. Unbelievable. Just a great out. And you know what, man? They're blockers, too. Taking care of business in the run game as well. I'm impressed. I love it. 
This kid's got bright futures, both of them. Rocky? And Anthony mentioned the tight ends. I just think defenses aren't used to seeing this style of tight end ones that block really well, but plus are also dangerous in the pass game. This is kind of pro style of scheme not being run much anymore in college football. I think it catches defenses by surprise. And Rocky, tell, tell the audience, what does two tight ends balance? How does that hurt? What's it take away from a defense when you have two tight ends in the game? Well, you don't, you're don't. you a little bit indecisive. That's for one there because you, don't, you know they're a threat in the past, but they can also come out and block you. No I, thought, I think it nullifies the blitz packages. I, I think because you could run and, like you say, you could pass. It takes away some of the exotic things maybe Indiana wanted to try to do in this game, haven't been able to get to it. They've had some really good ones here over the years. Of course, a staple of Kirk Ferentz's offense. But again, we'll go back to Brian Ferentz and his time in New England with a fellow by the name of Gronk as one of his uh, star tight ends that they used exclusively during his time there. So not only Ferentz, but also Belichick, and also Bill O'Brien was on that staff when he was there, now with the Texans. And he really and he already mentioned Skarnickia. Yeah, and he was really downplaying his role there. Like, yeah. he was coaching tight ends. Like, I was pouring coffee. I was bringing cups. He's like, I took a step back so he could learn. I get, him, I get him credit for leaving, you know, Iowa and going somewhere else and, and learning from a place that knew how to do it and then you come back you get back with your father and all of a sudden now you, you've got it all down and put it together pretty well first and ten for indiana deep ball and a big pop and what a job by timmy and to hang on after he took the hit from javas yeah welcome back timmy and that, that's the way you come back and make a play he's still banged up folks but watch the concentration not only to hold it but protect himself from that hit and come down with it against his body. It's a nice job throwing that ball and catching it. Stevie Scott on the ground. We've got a studio update, Chris. Wow, that's shocking. Wow. Auburn struggling. Here's Taylor out of the backfield. We mentioned early on today how when Indiana can run, they're a whole lot better. They haven't been able to run it today. Just 43 yards on the ground, and uh, for much of the second half, forced to play catch-up. Yeah, they're going to have to spread it out. Yeah. When they get into the red zone, I mean, they, they have receivers, big guys, 6'4 guys in Westbrook and Hale, but they just haven't been able to get down there back. And the third down conversion's not good so far. Got a free one. Yep, draws the flag, so the chuck deep down field, incomplete. Looking for Westbrook, that was Anthony Nelson that jumped offside. Good job by Peyton Ramsey understanding the situation and just chucking it up there for his 6'3 wide receiver, Westbrook. This will get him the first down, too. Offside, defense, number 98. The five-yard penalty results in a first down. Top of your screen, mixing up the snap count. Nice. That little clap got Nelson off the edge, and Peyton Ramsey doing a nice job. Six foot seven. This guy's very productive. Haven't heard much of him today, but coming off a big three sack game last week. Runs up under center. They're going to set up an opportunity for Taylor to throw it. Nothing doing, so he'll run with it down to about the 26 yard line yeah we saw this in practice yesterday they wanted to throw it back across the field but iowa in good coverage not being fooled on it but reese is good enough athlete reese Taylor's a good enough athlete to get them yards even though it didn't work if i'm indian i throw one up again to nick westbrook bottom of your screen make him stop it and he's right there six foot three They'll run it with Scott, and he runs into his own man again. A good push by that defensive line led by Anthony Nelson. Third down. Now, one player we haven't heard much of offensively is number five, Harris. He's coming onto the field now. He's a slot player for them, leads the team in receptions, but hasn't really been able to be a factor today. Maybe third and short. This is kind of his area where he can work. you got to win one-on-one -on -one in man-to-man -man coverage.
Pressure coming. The quick release. Incomplete down to the five yard looking for Timmy and there's a flag. That'll be interference. Michael O.J. Moutier. Yeah, again, his head's not turned around. Timian does a nice job. Well, it actually gets around there. here, but he is grabbing the chest plate there of the pads. And Peyton Ramsey, honestly, was just throwing the ball up because of the pressure of an unblocked defensive lineman coming out of his face, Matt Nelson, uh, number, number 96. The other Nelson on the D-line. No relation, just two very good defensive players for Iowa. Into the red zone, Ramsey keeping it all the way. Good move at the 10 yard line, lunging for the goal line. Touchdown. Ramsey makes it tough in space. Uh, that's a heck of a job by him. Finally, their offense able to get a big play. Make sure he didn't touch the sideline. Uh, left foot and pylon is in if the ball touches it. Yeah, it's going. This good. It's going to stay, and they're going to go for two right here. And we got Westbrook here. Sometimes they take those shots. You have the matchup. They'll roll out Ramsey Nelson tracking them. Incomplete. Intended for Harris. Julius Brent's had the coverage, so the two-point conversion fails. 35-16, Iowa. And again, just winning in space. Ramsey, very fast. We talked about him earlier. He's dangerous with his legs. Gervas has an angle on him, but just good speed there. Just catch, catches him hesitating a bit. And that's a good extension by Ramsey to get in, stay in bounds, tightrope the sidelines, and get the ball over the pylon. Ramsey now with a touchdown throw and a touchdown run today. I really like his game, Beth. You know, his film is very good for a redshirt sophomore. Won the job in the summer against Michael Penix, who's a very good true freshman out of the Tampa Bay area uh, from Tampa Bay Tech. I saw him play. I lived down there. Very explosive quarterback, and they really like what he brought. So Ramsey, again, someone they really feel they can build with the future with. Ramsey is son of a coach, Doug Ramsey. His father is a head coach of Elder High School in Cincinnati, been coaching a long, long time. And just one of those legendary players coming out of Cincinnati a few years ago. Indiana's lucky to have him. Young on the return will get out close to the 30. As a, a flag came in at the end of that play. 14 penalties combined for 140 yards today. And we'll add to it here. Personal foul, kicking team, number 10. 15 yard penalty from the end of the run. First down and 10. Well, still to come on this busy day of college football or around the country, we'll head out west. 3.30 on either ABC or ESPN2. It's Washington, Oregon, and then it's the Saturday Night Football Showdown in the Big House, Michigan and Wisconsin. Both those games are also live on the ESPN app. Rocky, what you got on the Michigan D no, tonight? I'll tell you what, ever since giving up some big plays in Notre Dame in that opener, their defense has been solid. A ton of good players. Bush, the linebacker, great defensive lineman. They're really, they're showing you, it's not just how you start, it's how you finish. They're putting together some good stuff. Now the rollout here for Stanley. He'll throw for the uh, first down into Indiana territory. Yes, it is a Michigan D that's third in total defense in the country against Jonathan Taylor and that Wisconsin run game. Essentially a playoff matchup tonight. Yeah, physicality, that's all I can think of with those two teams playing each other. And 
Uh, you know, listen, I think we're all going to wait for that Ohio State game as well. If, if Michigan can pull this off, can he finally, Harbaugh, finally beat Ohio yep. State? Hadn't happened yet. Tell you what, Notre Dame is some Michigan fans at this point in the season, too. They want them to run the table, especially that final game versus Ohio State. That catch, by the way, for T.J. Hawkinson puts him over 100 yards receiving on the day with the two touchdowns. Makai Sargent with a flag down. He and Young have comboed for over 100 yards on the ground this afternoon. Personal foul, illegal block to all the ways. Offense, number 38, 15-yard penalty, first down. That's on Hawkinson. That's Caton Samuels, the grad student transfer from Syracuse. Yeah, here's the two tight ends. Basically, Hawkinson, Hawkinson's going to get him for an illegal cut because he's already engaged by number 39. And yep. You cannot chop a player down when another player on your team has your hand, a body, or any presence on that defender. Good to see the big man get up. Six foot, 320, Beth. Out of Ellenwood, Georgia. So that's going to set Iowa back into their own turf here at the 44. Looking at a first and 25. Yeah, not a lot of options here first and 25 to get screens. This is obviously an opportunity now for Indiana coming off a score. They can get a stop here, push it a little bit, try to get themselves back in this game. And because so far for Kirk and Brian Ferentz as another flag flies, when we talked to him yesterday, they had three things they wanted to do. Protect the ball. Run the ball effectively inside and control the tempo. Pass interference. Offense, number 87. 15-yard penalty. First down. And the last thing they wanted to do was throw efficiently. Well, they've checked off each of those three boxes today. And here's Noah Fance again. This is the second one. Really just collides with the backer. Just it looks like he was a little disappointed that he got hit and tried to block him a little bit, but it was too early because he easily didn't have the football yet. So... As good as he's played catching the ball, he's had a couple penalties in this game as well. Really Eight like. Iowa penalties, nine Indiana penalties. Brian Ferentz getting a hold of Fant to settle him down. Makai Sargent weaving his way back out across the 45. Out to the 47 and a run of 18 yards. Yeah, defensive line is just getting handled right now. And, you know, this is what Iowa does to you. They start taking their will a little bit. Fans back in the game now, but just, just total domination up front. I mean, Indiana's nowhere to be found. Get the push and the balance, right, Beth? Keep talking about it, but that's a huge yep. factor when you're talking about it. If Iowa's balanced like that, 24 and 23, you know they're winning the game. 365 yards of total offense so far. Over three minutes still to go here in the third. Pressure coming on Stanley. Able to stay on his feet to complete the throw. They'll end up losing a few. Raekwon Jones was coming right after the quarterback, but again, the strength of Stanley to stay upright. I mean, this has got to be so frustrating for Indiana's defense. This is the third or fourth time they've had the quarterback dead to rights, but they can't bring him down. Yeah, it's like, big, look, he very much resembles Ben Roethlisberger in these situations. Shown it a bunch of times. Right there, a lot of quarterbacks are sitting ducks down. He's still able to get it out and make a completion. Third and long for Nate Stanley, who's already got five touchdown passes today to match the two times he did it a year ago. 
a run of jet sweep. And they'll come up well short. Indiana forces the punt. That was Max Cooper. This will just be the second punt of the day for Colton Rastetter. Jay Sean Harris is back deep. The boot is away, and that will make its way into the end zone for the touchback. 46 yards on the punt. Well, this week, ESPN's Monday Night Football. We go to Lambeau Field for the 49ers and the Packers. Coverage begins with Monday Night Countdown, served by Applebee's at 6 Eastern, with the game at 8.15. Well, last time these two clubs got together, Jordan Howard for Indiana. Two TD runs in the first half. The Hoosiers were able to keep it close, but then C.J. Beathard would clinch it with the touchdown pass to George Kittle in the fourth quarter that would keep Iowa unbeaten throughout the regular season that year. They didn't lose until the Big Ten championship game. And who would think C.J. Beathard be starting at quarterback for the 49ers and his boy Kittles <laughs> is the leading receiver on the 49ers as well with 23 catches. I'll tell you, man, those are two players that was fun to watch. The reason why C.J. Beathard is playing in the NFL, a lot of people didn't think he was a big-name guy coming out. It's because of the system that they run at Iowa. He was very productive, a lot of checks at the line of scrimmage, a lot of pro-style elements, and uh, that's why he's on the 49ers playing right now. Stevie Scott is not a uh, eighth carry for 29 yards today. They've been tough to come by on the ground. Second and five, Indiana. Final minute and a half of this third quarter. Underneath, catch is made by Harris, met immediately by Welch. It'll be just short. Excuse me, that was Gervas. Again, you got two freshman corners on either side for Iowa. Two 6-4 type receivers. Maybe take a chance. I mean, you may get a, a penalty or something, but got to get a strategic shot here. Of course, third and one, not opportune time, but if they get this conversion. Ramsey calls his own number. Burrows his way for the first down. And I think, I think you make a good point. If I'm in the end, I continue to throw that ball up with the inexperience in the secondary for Iowa. They look a little nervous when that ball's up in the air. They're kind of pulling and tugging on those wide receivers. If nothing else, you cause a penalty. Out of the backfield and close to midfield goes Luke Timian. That'll stop the clock 20 seconds in the quarter. They took those shots last week against Ohio State. Uh, they did it to loosen up their defense, but they were really productive at it. Not only did they do it, they were catching them. And that made some big, big time plays for, for Westbrook and, and also Hal. So, again, see if they take a chance. Throw to the edge, out of bounds for the first down at the 46-yard line of Iowa as the quarter comes to an end. Donovan Hale with the catch. Been a lot of Iowa today, 35-16. Hawkeyes in front. I've been a soldier for three years. I've scaled the toughest terrain and faced plenty of my fears as part of my training. And for the past two years, I've been a Navy Federal member. So even out here, I can pay securely with mobile pay, linked to my free checking account. I don't know about this. It's... <laughs> what did you say? She said, I don't know about that. I couldn't hear my helmet. Yeah, your ears are completely exposed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just... Navy Federal Credit Union. Our members are the mission. Rated M for Mature.
Play new content first on PS4. PlayStation. The ESPN app now with ESPN Plus. Get more ESPN and download now. Back here at uh, Bloomington, homecoming for the Indiana Hoosiers. They're down 35 to 16 to Iowa as we start the fourth quarter. Luke Timian with the catch. We were just on that ESPN app getting some uh, some score updates. We uh, Minnesota hanging around with Ohio State right now. And Florida coming back on Vandy. That's just a one-point game. Second and six, Hoosiers. Ramsey's throw is caught with a penalty flag. It uh, looked like Matt Nelson might have been offside again. Catch was made by Donovan Hale. Took a big hit, too, there, Beth, on the sidelines. Offside. Defense, number 96. The penalty is declined. The result of the play is a first down. How about a Nebraska update, Chris? Tight one there, Northwestern and Nebraska, and into the red zone, and a first down for Donovan Hale. Indiana on the move. Peyton Ramsey now 23 for 30 with 204 passing yards and the one touchdown. He's also run for a score today. Scott and Taylor are the backs. Taylor in motion. Ramsey. Looking again to Hale, just short of the five. Second and short. Hey, Hale, big receiver, 6'4", 230 pounds. You know, with Wap Fillier and Luke Timmy and Beth been out a couple weeks, Timmy and back now, other receivers have been able to step up, and it just shows they got a lot of depth. They'll have some guys leaving, but Hale and uh, Freifogel, Westbrook, these guys will all be back. Picked off by Geno Stone. And that will kill the Indiana drive. I uh, just read his eyes. Attributes of defenders can trick quarterbacks when they read their eyes. And that's a great job by Stone. Not only reading it, but pulling it into his body on the tough catch. Big play, Iowa. Welcome to Mitsubishi. Interested in a test drive? Yeah. yeah. Sure. Can you check out the stereo? Introducing the 2019 Mitsubishi Eclipse Cross. If you like sculpted lines, you'll love its dynamic design. In a world of asphalt, <laughs> gravel, and snow, Super All Wheel Control will save the day. With a 10 year, 100,000 mile powertrain limited warranty, the Eclipse Cross is a must see. Now showing at a dealership near you. <laughs> what? Get up to $3,000 cash back or 0% APR on select Mitsubishi crossovers. Drive your ambition. Mitsubishi Motors. As your home becomes more connected, you need Fios, the 100% fiber optic network, because you'll get phenomenal capacity for your tech and the most awarded network for internet service satisfaction for the past 10 years. Now get $200 toward a range of Google and Nest smart home devices, plus the fastest internet available, TV with up to 250 channels, phone, and a two-year price guarantee, all for just $79.99 per month with a two-year agreement. And if you order online by October 31st, you'll get a $100 Visa prepaid card. Go to GetFios.com. The end zone interception for Genus. Uh, Geno Stone ends the drive for Iowa, and they'll have it first and 10 out at the 20. 35 to 16 Hawkeyes, five touchdown throws for Nate Stanley. And his tight ends today, Hawkinson and Fant, seven catches for 150 yards and three scores. Uh, now with the fourth quarter underway, expecting a heavy dose of the run game from Iowa. 
Yeah, Beth, the uh, two tight end, one wide receiver look uh, is an indicator. We're just going to try to run this ball and run the clock out. <laughs> It would get the Hawkeyes to five and one, two and one in the league. As they are looking up right now at Wisconsin, the Badgers undefeated in the West Division. And uh, Ross is the injured Hawkeye back in a moment. The X-T5 reviews are in. Get this low mileage lease on this 2018 Cadillac X-T5 from around $379 per month. Visit your local Cadillac dealer. One cup of lemonade. Time to pack up, kids. NFL Sunday Ticket. Get every live game every Sunday at no extra charge when you switch to DirecTV. More for your thing. That's our thing. ESPN College Football is presented by the unexpected energy of ExxonMobil. Energy lives here. That's going to be on Sports Center, And that's what the Iowa tight ends have done today, including that monster block from Hawkinson. Seven catches, 150 yards, three TDs. It's tight end you, Beth. I don't know what else you want me to say about these guys. I'll just say this. That block that you all saw coming back from the break is as good a block as I've seen a tight end make. I don't know what I'm going to say. When I, well, I didn't wanna, when you were watching <laughs> film was, back was, in the 1980s. I was trying to tee up, Beth. You caught it. Got Beth, you can't set him up like that. You can't do it. I was like, come on, help me out. Uh, I'm not the all-time assist leader at Lafayette for nothing, Rocky. <laughs> <laughs> Hit on the quarterback incomplete. How about a Gator update, Chris Cotter? <laughs> Andy, we gosh. heard you. We heard you there, Chris. We heard you there. Twenty-one to three. Little chomp. Hey, play four quarters. The heck of a job by Florida coming back. Yep, they were in big trouble. Torn Young is the offset back. Stanley going deep. He's got a man out there. Coming back for it is no oh. fan. Foot race is on. Fan wow. tripped up at the 25. Uh, again, in the slot. It's not a favorable matchup. Good job using your hand to get in separation. An underthrown ball, but the separation by Fan was so much. And he just gets tripped up at the end. And let's add up those numbers and those stats. There's McShea, I know, has got him number one. I know Kirk Ferentz doesn't like to hear some of those draft uh, projections but look fan is a special player he's a little nicked up today he didn't get as many reps but you can see he's starting to pick up momentum this is the best tight end crew by far in the country both guys have a 50 yard reception both are over 100 for the game incomplete as they were trying to get more for hawkinson 208 yards receiving on eight catches if Hawkinson caught that ball, it may have went downstairs. <laughs> what a nice uh, route here. Did it get tipped or did he drop? You know, that sun's right in his face. Oh! Oh, quit making excuses yeah, for him. He's got to catch that Rocky, ball. the sunlight was shining <laughs> right go. down. It's interesting. <laughs> and, fan, you know, these guys work well together. Look at him. Going over to him. Give him a high five. It's just what it's all about, man. These two kids play off each other, and yep. they are dangerous. On second and ten, back to the ground. Torin Young with the spin. I always think it's great to have two prime, big-time players at the same position group. Because, Anthony, you know they feed off of one another. They compete against one another. They want to be the top guy in that room. You're right. And let's just reiterate, Hawkinson's a true sophomore for Iowa. So he ain't going anywhere. And Noah Fan, who may be trying to be persuaded, is a true junior. I mean, these guys could be something special. They already are right now, but man, this is this is a presents a problem for for Big Ten teams throughout the season. Uh, 
Got a whistle for the snap. Ball start. Offense. Not out of 11 men. We're set for one second. Five yard penalty. Third down. The average, by the way, for the two tight ends today is 26 yards per catch for Fant and Hawkinson. Yeah, that kind of matches up uh, back in the day, Ben, that those average yards for catch. So reliable. Yeah. Stanley obviously trusts him. And the matchups are just lethal. Linebacker safeties is just hard. Big body guys that can run the football. It's a challenge. Third and 13 here. They're going to run for it, oh. and they're going to get it. Makai Sargent first down and a run of 14. And again, look, look at the gaping hole. I mean, where where are the defenders? Where's the help from the secondary? It's late, and you got a defensive lineman making a tackle, you know, 13 yards down the field. And just been an off day for whatever reason. You know, I have seen Indiana's defense on film play a lot better than they have today, but it comes down to the trenches, and Iowa has dominated that area. First and goal now from the 10. Throwing incomplete. Looking for Brandon Smith. Anthony, you're asking where the help is in the run game. The help is out trying to solidify those tight, tight ends end. a little yeah. bit. Not, well, that's the go. problem. You know? perfect, perfect example, exactly right. right? I mean, it's, it's just tough. And again, who, who you want to guard, pick your poison. I mean, they have formidable receivers, Iowa. They don't have big numbers, but they can beat you here and there with size and some speed. But with Smith Marset, but again, here's Hawkinson in that slot area. We're gonna go empty set here, second and goal. Receiver screen will get him down to about the seven. That's Smith Marset. It is the first time, by the way, that Iowa has two 100 yard receivers in a game in seven years. There's a uh, Father and son together for Iowa. Looking at a third and goal. Going to mark him at the eight. Little bunch look here at the top of the screen. Cause a little confusion in coverage. See if Indiana can handle it. Stanley floats one up incomplete in the flag in the end zone. Looking for Smith Marset. Going to get a defensive holding Beth on Indiana. Prior to the pass being thrown, holding defense number nine. Half the distance to the goal, automatic first down. Got to be at least four or five against the defensive backfield and Tom Allen nonplussed. And yeah, not happy, and that's the second one today on Jonathan Crawford, the arguably their best defender, mm -hmm. leader. He's been challenged. I mean, look, this is a game where the strong safeties, they're going to get that matchup with the tight ends. And uh, he's had his hands full today versus both of them. First, first and goal from the four. Stanley on the rollout, drops it off. Touchdown. Oh, man. To Austin Kelly, the fullback. And it's a career high for Nate Stanley with touchdown number six today. What a day. Running the ball, passing the ball, strong in the pocket. Again, watch the fullback just slide underneath. Who's going to guard the fullback? I don't know. Never saw him. Right number 46. The linebacker's late. And you want to talk about giving dog a bone right there. That's a fullback. That's the backup fullback, Beth, getting in on the action today. And, and why not, right? Everybody else is getting a chance. Touchdown down number six to a sixth different guy today for Nate Stanley and the Hawkeyes. If 
Seen some keys. Oh, thanks, sir. Looking forward to that, Chris. Nine different guys with a catch for Iowa. Five different guys have caught six touchdown passes. So we're going to give Iowa the win today. Here's what's coming yeah. up for Iowa and Wisconsin. Well, I mean, you're, you know, this is a huge game, and uh, you know Iowa's going to be cheering, but this is it, the common denominator. Can Iowa beat Penn State, and can this Penn State beat Wisconsin? That's where it all comes together for Iowa getting back in the mix here being that the fact that Wisconsin beat Iowa early in the season. I'll tell you, Rocky, we watched that film. I, I, I was like, well, I, I don't know where Wisconsin was going to be able to beat Iowa throughout that game. And then those turnovers, turnovers and costly yeah. plays yeah. killed them. Had them in the fourth quarter. I think the... So I the mean, West, ironically enough, yeah. the West is going to go through Happy Valley. Both of them have to play Penn State. I think if nothing else, Iowa finds himself in the top 25 this coming week, yeah. right? This kind of performance? I think so. I mean, a close game against Wisconsin. We just showed Stanley. I mean, Beth, coming into this game, I was like, man, I don't know if he's going to get back on pace with his touchdown catches from last year, but <laughs> heck, throw that out the window. He's yeah. up to 15 now, so it looks a lot better. 9-4 to four ratio to 15-4 to four ratio. I like that. Of course, just to wrap up the schedule, obviously, with Wisconsin winning the head-to-head -head against Iowa, that would mean the Hawkeyes got to have one less loss or get into a three-team tiebreak situation. Yeah. yeah, they're cheering for Michigan, yeah. and they're cheering for Penn State, and of course, they'll have to take care of business against the Nittany Lions. And the Nittany Lions may beat them both, to be quite honest with you. I mean, that's, they're no pushover games, but we all know when they get together, they're very close games. Northwestern still in the mix there as well. The throw downfield, reaching back to catch it is Freifogel out to midfield for the first down. Here is the ESPN.com FPI with the best chance to win the Big Ten, still very much in Ohio State's favor. Yeah, they're hanging on. I mean, Michigan obviously too, they don't have a loss in the Big Ten as well, so uh, you know, it'll come down to those two teams possibly moving forward. Timmy in with the catch there. Of course, for Iowa, they were in that Big Ten championship game uh, at the end of that uh, 2015 undefeated season. And then lost in the title game and lost in the Rose Bowl. So they have been there before. Timmy in, thrown for a loss. Well, tomorrow at 10 Eastern on ESPN, it's Sunday NFL Countdown presented by Snickers. We'll take you inside the Patriots locker room and give you all access to Jared Goff with the Rams off to the 5-0 start. Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Eastern on ESPN, it's Sunday NFL Countdown. I'll be headed to the Meadowlands after this game, Beth. See a little Jets, Colts. Yep. Andrew Luck back on the field. NFL goes across the pond this week. It does, too. The first yeah. game in uh, London, Raiders and Seahawks. Tell you what, NFL game of the week, Steelers, Bengals, oh, big rivalry yeah. match here in my hometown, man. <laughs> Gee, you haven't talked about that too much at home, have you? <laughs> uh, that throw is incomplete, but that'll draw a flag on Amani Cooker. For the most part, I'll tell you, this Iowa defense has been impressive today. On the spot, tackling, 
always in the right gaps. They don't give up many explosive plays on the season at all, especially today. And they've really kept Holding. in check. Defense, 10-yard penalty, automatic first down. Really kept in check this Indiana offense, mm -hmm. who, quite honestly, coming into this game, had been really good passing, uh, passing the ball. There's Phil, uh, Phil Parker, Parker yep. defensive coordinator who, I mean, listen, you know, I asked him about his fresh uh, freshman on the corners and some of his young players and linebackers. You know, he said, I'm not worried. I was like, well, are you going to hold anything back? <laughs> no, nah, I'm not. So, I mean, look, he, he came in. He fell up. There was confidence there from him into this game. So, hey, I mean, he, he knows his players better than I do. So, and they're showing it today. Chanthony, you don't have to hold anything back if you're getting a pass rush like this. Yeah, that, that obviously helps. There's no doubt. And they're still bringing it. I mean, they're, they're definitely finishing this game. Chauncey Golston with the sack there, a first for Iowa. Second down and 15. They'll bring some pressure again. This is Mike McJet trying to double back and does so. McJet will be about a yard short of the marker. And a gain of 14. And Phil Parker said, too, that this was as deep as he's ever had a defensive line yeah. as well. Maybe since he's been at the program, he just feels like he's got one or two guys that can play every one of those positions. And maybe the smartest experienced front four guys, the starters, that he's ever had. This is a top ten defense in FBS right now in terms of total D and rush D. They've held Indiana to 63 yards on the ground, 324 total so far as we approach five minutes to play. Majet will get the first down. And Anthony talked about that Iowa defensive line. I love what Phil Parker said. He said, our D-line, they talk ball, right? They love talking football and how to get better. I think that's so important. So many football players today, they love what the game brings them. These guys actually just love the game of football. They're constantly talking about the game plan, getting involved in the game plan week to week. And I, that, that definitely puts a smile on a coach's face when you got guys like that down. And it's also great leadership for the young players. You know, Absolutely. A.J. Uh, Epinesa is an upcoming guy, a guy that they want to see more on the field, but he is just soaking in from guys like Hesse and Nelson and all these uh, players up front. So, again, just that brand of football that Kirk Ferentz has brought to the table, these guys buy in. And they're not allowed on Twitter during the season as well. So that? That's they, huge. You don't have to worry about social media. Well, it says a lot about the chemistry of this team. You know, it, it's been this way for years at Iowa. They may not get those five-star guys, but you snag the three stars and a, a few four stars, and then it's about their development, right? This entire senior-laden uh, defensive front with Nelson being the junior, these are guys that have been together a ton of time. Hesse was a quarterback, Ben. <laughs> a quarterback! The guy's six, three, 261 pounds. He's their best pass rusher. It's amazing. Player development in Iowa City. Slinging it down the middle, incomplete. Broken up by Gervas. Hesse was like, Hesse was saying, well, they came to me. It's a great play by Gervas, by the way, but Hesse was like, they asked me to play. Look, you're going to play defensive end. We're going to move your position. And he's like, man, I just play a quarterback. I don't know if it's going to work <laughs> out. And then you just trust the process. He said, I just trust what they asked me to do. And all of a sudden he's, what is it, 45 starts now, Beth, at the defensive end position. Fourth down. Unbelievable. For Ramsey and this offense. Into the end zone, second time today. The Hawkeyes have picked off a pass in the end zone, and it's Gervas with the pick. Iowa will take over. Uh, Ger Gervas is just scanning the field. Watching the quarterback, everybody's covered. He just steps in front and says, look what I got. Putting a wrap right now on this Indiana offense.
Thanks. It's like a smart thing. What's the weather? Sunny. Perfect chicken eating weather. How'd you get in here? It's time for chicken. Ugh. What's the traffic like? Rerouting you to chicken. Okay. Hey, Kazo, order pizza. Ordering chicken. No, pizza. Chicken. Okay, chicken it is. Chick-fil-A nuggets make dinner delightful. Now that's smart. Couple games still to come your way from the Pac-12, Washington and Oregon coming up next. And then tonight, Saturday Night Football presented by Wells Fargo. Number 15, Wisconsin. Number 12, Michigan. What is shaping up to be pretty much a playoff game for the Badgers and the Wolverines. That's coming up tonight at 7.30 Eastern. Both games are also live on your ESPN app. If you're out and about, Big day for Nate Stanley and the Hawkeyes with the big lead. What you got for us, Chris Cotter? Oh boy, Pitt takes the early lead over the undefeated Irish. It's Rocky OK down there. <laughs> Biting my tongue down here. <laughs> Unbeaten Ohio State. Nine point lead with five and a half to go over Minnesota right now. Oh boy. And they are still throwing the ball. Guys, is there some bad blood between yeah. these two teams that I don't know about? I gotta, re I gotta read a little deeper in the, uh, the notes here. But uh, this, look, I know how Iowa gets at the end of the games like this. They just hand the ball off, yeah. hand the ball off. So. I don't know if something goes back to their game. Was it two years ago, Beth, that they played, or? Not sure why they're not running it here. Three, uh, three twelve to go with the big lead. He Stanley's wonder, already yeah. got the career high with six touchdowns. Just wonder if somebody said something, some coaching yeah. staff said something during the week. They're lighting them up here. They're gonna throw again, third and five. First down. Out across the 35-yard line of Brandon Smith. Gain of 13. A lot of people talking about Stanley and his ranking and the quarterbacks. I mean, listen, the, the, the future is bright. He's in a system that is very, very transferable to the next level. Uh, I would love to see him stick around next year. I think, I think he may lean towards that. I think they got a lot of weapons with this team. Uh, they got young tackles on the outside that they've been grooming now for two years. They'll have to replace some guys in the interior, but the backs, the skill position players, the tight end could be something special. This is a good season, yeah. too. Don't get me wrong. They got a lot of work to do, but moving forward, man, Iowa fans got to be happy about what's going on right now on the field. And now they're going to run it here and work the clock. It's been a terrific day for Nate Stanley. Five different guys have caught a touchdown pass, Hawkinson twice. Yeah, touchdowns to the tight ends catchable passes you know again they're just weapons all over the place you see the accountability there and the most reliable receiver dumping it on the outside all the guys got an opportunity in this football game to make plays get a position to be successful and they're all young players easily he's the only senior out of the crew he's throwing balls to and then they just throw out about three or four different fullbacks to catch balls too so they're loaded anthony i think he should come back too but it's a thin quarterback draft he maybe get you know be yeah. tempted here to Go up higher. The tight ends today, eight catches, 208 yards, and the three touchdowns just for Fanton Hawkinson. Well, tonight after the fight on ESPN at Sports Center with Max and Stan, we'll have all the post-fight breakdown for you, plus the best of the day in college football and a lot of Major League Baseball playoff action to tell you about Dodgers, Brewers, Strohs, Sox, tonight after boxing on ESPN, as well as the ESPN app. I want to jump on that fight tonight. You see that swing uh, in swing the press conference? Yeah, yeah. It's, it should be a pretty good battle. <laughs> I don't know. I'm looking forward to it. Final minute. And a big road win for Iowa. Hawkeyes will get ready for Maryland. The Terps, a uh, big win today against Rutgers. 
And for Indiana, they uh, have Penn State coming here next week. 479 yards of total offense right down the middle. 32 runs, 32 throws. And that is the sound of the Iowa fans cheering on Nate Stanley and this offense today. As they let the play clock expire for the delay of game, and it's one more snap and start the bus. Hawkeyes will improve to five and one. Indiana will drop to four and three on the season. Pretty good show by Iowa today, Beth. I mean, a lot of people are hyping this game up. That firing offense from Indiana. Does Iowa have enough to hold out? Well, they were the show today. Passing game. You talked about the balance. I've been impressed with what I've seen today. Of course, Iowa waiting for the signature win. I think. A lot of people were talking about that too, Beth. Coming into this game, a lot of hype about the performance in the last couple weeks, and maybe this was going to be the day, but Iowa had other things planned. Now the officials are coming over to talk with the Indiana coach, Tom Allen, here. That, uh, I think might have been some issue with the play because clock. Because it was delay a game, it was during a running clock in under one minute, a 10 second run up was an option. Indiana's declined that option, fourth down. Wow. <laughs> oh boy. So they're going to make. Hey, when are these guys Iowa play again? It. Are they on the schedule next year? Because <laughs> sign me up for that game. Because that's something. <laughs> oh boy. Oh and Iowa's going to throw it. And, some, and they didn't get on the same page there. Nobody told Smith Marset, but I'll tell you, let's watch this handshake. Final score from Bloomington, 42 to 16. Iowa with the win over Indiana. Up next on ESPN2, Washington, Oregon, or UCF, Memphis. But for right now, let's get you back to Chris Cotter in the studio.